All right, guys, on this episode, we're going to be going over how your body responds to sudden violence, specifically the startle flinch response, which can be easy to learn. But we're also going to go over some complex motor skills, which aren't as easy to learn. And we're going to break all those down on this episode. As a SEAL for 12 years, I learned quick that testing and evaluation are critical. I want to have the zip ties knuckle to knuckle. You have no idea what works and what doesn't until the bullets actually start flying. And now that I'm out, I get tons of people asking me all the time about their favorite TV shows and movies. What's realistic and what isn't? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time to put Hollywood to the test. I'm Dom Rosso, and this is Media Lab. Hey guys, I'm pumped about this week's episode of Media Lab because I got my longtime friend Tony Blauer here and I've been wanting to get you on the show ever since we started. So if you don't know, he's the guy who's pioneered all the behavioral research around the startle flinch response or AKA spear system. So Tony, I'm stoked to have you here and obviously I think we're gonna be spearing a couple things. I'm excited to be here too, buddy. Right on. So before we get into Bourne, let's take a look at a scene that I know you're gonna have a lot to talk about from the movie Saving Private Ryan. Okay, so we see that scene from Saving Private Ryan, I'm sure a lot of people remember. Really violent scene, gross motor skill movements. He's even biting in there, right? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, one of the most graphic, violent, emotional scenes in, in almost every movie. Years ago when we first saw it, we started really trying to inspire people to understand startle flinch and physiology. We created a drill based on that, kind of reverse engineered this drill to, to help people understand that what the body wants to do when it's ambushed, when it's afraid, is to push away danger. Um, so what we're gonna do, the first drill we're gonna do is just I want you to extend your arm, Dom, put it out like this. And there's two factors. When you push away danger and you flinch, your hands are always open unless they're holding onto something. I'm gonna put part of the wrist here on my shoulder. So Dom's gonna lock his arm out here like this. The first thing I'm gonna have him do, just so you understand about physiology here, is I'm gonna make a, have him make a fist. I'm just gonna put my arms over here. I'm gonna ask Dom if he's ready. And then I'm not gonna jump speed into this. I'm gonna slowly pull it down and Dom's gonna resist. You can see the arm starts to bend and the whole body collapses. And I was putting good pressure on that. Now, fingers played and drive your fingers towards the target on the wall there and just focus on the wall there. Now, some of you who've done Aikido might be talking to yourself right now. Oh, that's the unbendable arm demo. So let me show you something here. You ready to go? And now I'm cranking on here as hard as I can. And you can see the smile on his face there. He's very relaxed with this. Now, set it up again, lock it again, nice and tight. Okay, so I put pressure on here. Now make a fist. He makes a fist and the whole thing collapses. Now check this out, this freaks people out. Finger splayed, lock it out nice and tight. Look at your shoes and it collapses. Having faith in physiology is really what we're trying to inspire people to do. You are already a human weapon system, so your body knows how to fight. You just need to kind of reprogram this a little bit. The other part of this is this outside 90 principle. So outside 90 is this concept here. So 90 degree angle, okay? This is what we call outside 90. This would be inside 90. When your arm is inside 90, so lock it here like this, and now check this out. He's right at 90, lock it as tight as you can. So I'm gonna just push a little, a little pressure on Dom here, and you're just a little bit outside 90, just go there. Lock it nice and tight. Now check this out. I'm gonna push him, his arm collapses right into a sternum. Now check this out, don't do anything, just go outside 90 slightly. Now lock it nice and tight. When I, when I pushed it that time, it collapsed, but there was this kind of like elastic response in his body that shot me back too. This is huge when you're grappling with somebody who's got a knife or a gun or a rock or whatever, because you got to get outside 90 and you got to have faith in physiology and understand how that stuff, uh, you know, is, is put together. Yeah, no, that gives us a good base. I mean, it, you know, connecting that extensor muscle and what we're doing, and this is why we're bringing it back to this drill, because that blade comes out. And now he's like, okay, I'm getting stabbed. So how do we change that? Yeah, so we'll transition to, uh, the ground sequence and show you how that applied in the Saving Private Ryan moment. So the arm was pinned here, and here's what happened, is this guy started to crank this way 
and he started the leverage here. And the soldier didn't understand physiology or faith in physiology. And how do we know that? And this is huge. What did he start to do? Please, please, you know, please no, I got a family. He started begging for his life. At that moment, you were emotionally disconnected from that offensive mindset that we talk about, right? So now what we gotta do is go back to this outside 90, start to find an angle where Dom is going to lose that 90 degree position, okay? So this is the type of thing that you would experiment with. There we go, now freeze right there. Dom at this point, because he's not fighting, and again, what, what he would have to do here is find a way using his feet and his hips to shimmy that position. There we go, now see how he did that? That was beautiful, okay? So you saw right here, he's back outside 90. Now in a real fight, he'd extend that arm, he'd come up over, maybe you know, eye gouge the guy, grab his hair, rake him. You know, now the fight would start to happen. You know, now we understand the physiology behind you, how your body's working. And that was more of a, a protective type of environment where you're trying to defend. But now, how do we apply that in more of a tactical environment and more dynamic? And we're gonna check that out with our primary scene from Born Identity. You, red bag, the red bag, stop right there. Put okay, so obviously up. the embassy scene, what are we seeing here? As soon as he realizes that he doesn't have a way out, he starts putting up the nonviolent posture, right? All right, guys, we're gonna break down the scene from Bourne. The first thing he does when he walks in here goes into this nonviolent posture, and that puts him in the best position possible to handle any attacks, whether they're frontal or for the side. It just gets his hands in the fight, but also looks submissive. And obviously, we've done nonviolent postures quite a bit. So as he puts his hands in the nonviolent posture, the first thing that happens is he puts his hand on his shoulder. I'm grabbing his hand and opening him up, which causes him to be a little bit more vulnerable and opens his neck up as well. Simultaneously, he's striking this guy in the throat, getting a good shot in there. And if anybody's ever been hit in the throat, you know that sucks. Now it loads him up for that perfect ulnar strike and ax hand, comes right back here, loads him up again. So he's kind of going doing that back and forth, loads him up again for a tie kick, does a low level kick here. That guy's probably not gonna be taken out of commission unless it was a really low destructive strike to the knee. The interesting part is like we said before, obviously we were talking about being on the ground, using the spear, but what happens when we start getting into a dynamic environment? In this situation here, when he produces a baton, a strike, a baton, whatever it is, I turn around to see that coming and now my hands are up coming in here to crash in. What's what's neat about the outside 90 finger splay principle is this, if we could just step back here. If I don't know anything and he goes to swing at me, I'm gonna do this sort of thing. I'm gonna cover my head and that's that airbag metaphor. As you start to train, in this case, Born is well-trained, you're well-trained and we work with operators tier one, self-defense. We're teaching people the outside 90, we do the Saving Private Ryan stuff. So people have faith in physiology. When they understand finger splayed outside 90, you realize that the flinch actually puts your body in the shape of this organic ergonomic spear. So when that shot comes in, if I move into this, I'm driving right in like the tip of the spear. You know, he ends up converting it there. Once that second strike comes in, he kind of throws it kind of half-ass. That other one comes in, now he's engaged. Once he does that, the guy behind him becomes one of the most important parts of this, is that he's producing a gun. So what's he do? He actually closes the distance here to grab onto that pistol. So what do I do with this guy now? I gotta get him out of the way to get back to this pistol. So he ends up shucking him off. Now this is probably the worst part of the scene which I totally would have scratched and wouldn't have tried doing because now I've got a guy with a gun, I've got one hand on it. Instead of getting a known position and saying, okay, I'm gonna control this here, he ends up extending his arm and then turns his back towards him, reaches all the way over here to end up doing a throw. Now, I'm probably not gonna put myself in that position where I'm turning my back, I'm, I'm extending my arms. I'm probably gonna stay orientated on the weapon because that's the most important part. Close the distance on this and make sure I control this first before I start throwing my arms all over the place and turning my back. So everything else was pretty realistic. Our favorite part of that entire scene was the fact that he was getting his hands up. He was engaging in portions of the spear and that was probably the most effective thing and we're gonna have a portion of the high gear on when we run this in full speed right now. You, red bag, the red bag stop right there. Put your hands up.
All right, guys, wrapping up this episode. Obviously, we spent a lot of time talking about the spear and how it's applied. If you guys haven't, go check out Tony's stuff. He's putting on some great seminars, some great courses. Go online, go to his website. And the high gear that Dylan's wearing, obviously, we try to incorporate that all the time because some of the best stuff out there to use for scenario training and to go as hard as you possibly can without injuring each other. It's that impact reduction. So great episode. Now let's take it to Q&A. All right, guys, a little Q&A. And of course, we have Tony here with us. So why not get a little bit of information out of you with the questions I answer, right? So let's throw the first one up there. Do you believe in a defensive mindset in certain situations or is everything a form of attack? You know, when you talk about defense, the definition of defense is to protect. And everything that I've seen, even from a tactical perspective, you can do things proactively to protect things. So that's that's my opinion, and uh, curious to see what you think. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, a lot of that is is semantics. Defense means the bad guy's doing something to you. You need to be doing something to the bad guy. No, that's a great way of looking at it. All right, so next question. What makes a great training partner? Obviously, be a good bad guy, right? A great line. I yeah, like it. it's a good line. I don't know where I got that from. Yeah. Maybe this guy. Be a good bad guy is a staple in training. So I want uh, role players and trainers that are going to kind of get repl replicate exactly what the enemy is going to do so you can practice. The only way you get good at anything is just do reps, consistent good reps. Absolutely. So make sure if you guys are training, you get a good bad guy. Got one more alternative for you. We've got Hawk from Verdict Industries. This thing is awesome for training. You don't have to hold back at all. You can manipulate this. The arms will go any angle you want. It's definitely an awesome alternative. Tony, obviously awesome having you on the show, brother. And uh, we look Thank forward you. to training with you again real soon. See you guys next time on Media Lab.